Take a look at these two reps and guess how many repetitions I have left in the set. Can you tell? Is it zero, one, or two? If you guessed any of these, you probably aren't accustomed to really going all out in your training. Or you just fell for my trap card. I actually fail four reps after this, and then do one final rep after a brief pause. The point I'm illustrating here is that it's actually very hard to judge how many reps you have left by the feeling, tempo, or even the look of a submaximal rep. To truly know where failure is, you've got to meet it head on. I wasn't accustomed to all out training before I read heavy duty training the Mike Menser way. While I did feel like I was trying hard, I realize now that I was giving up too early, too often. I now feel that developing the skill of really putting in the maximum effort in my sets is leading to the best results I've ever had in training. In this video, I'm going to give you three signs you might not be really training to failure. Apologies for the lighting and camera angles on this, but I thought it would be most authentic to use real recent training footage of my actual sets to failure to illustrate this rather than staging sets for this video. We're keeping it raw and uncut. So here's sign number one, which is that you look good while doing it. If you're not pulling a face that would instantly ruin a first date, you might not be trying hard enough. Of course, we're all different, beautiful human beings, but my point is that when you're truly putting every ounce of effort into completing one more rep, the rest of your body will start to do some weird things. I grimace, I shake my head around, and my legs start twitching while I'm doing bicep curls. It ain't pretty, but it's the price we pay. And don't let these ticks turn into massive compensation and form breakdown in the exercise itself. Mild body English is par for the course, but if your first rep looks nothing like your last rep, you probably should focus your tryhard energy on technique. Sign number two you might not really be going to failure is that you're not scared to begin the set. If you're not intimidated about the thought of beginning your set to failure, you probably don't really expect that it will beat you down into submission and utterly refuse you one more rep. I don't mean to suggest that you need to actively dread your workouts, because of course I get really psyched about my training. I know it's going to be fun, it's going to challenge me, and I'll make progress from it. But I do need to take a moment to calm my nerves before a set, and truly commit to not holding back at all, and not just stopping when I think I'm done, but only when I've proven that I'm done. Sign number three is that you feel ready to train two days later. If you're feeling fully recovered 48 hours after taking a set to true muscular failure, you either have God to your recovery or you're lying to yourself about having actually gone to muscular failure. Training hard like this takes its toll and it's important to give your body appropriate rest. Everyone is different, but generally three to seven days between workouts on the same exercise is what it takes to recover for most people. Of course, you don't need to train to failure all the time. Many styles of training do not involve reaching failure in every workout. And for these, less recovery is needed, which permits you to train more frequently. But almost all training modalities require you to periodically go to absolute failure, either for the training stimulus itself or to test a one rep max or a five rep max to calibrate your intensity for a subsequent training phase. So at these times, a good way to judge whether you really went balls to the wall or not is whether you could repeat the effort less than 72 hours later. If you could, you likely left something in the tank. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. I'll leave you with a piece of practical advice. Don't be afraid to fail. The ability to push yourself to your absolute limit is a skill that requires practice. Every time you do it, you'll surprise yourself that you're able to give more than you had thought previously possible. Each time you finish a very hard rep, take a breath, refocus, and give your next one your full attention. If you consistently allow your mind to singularly focus on pushing or pulling as hard as you possibly can, you just might find your limits and over time blow way past them. Keep training and enjoy the journey.